Shai DeVitti of Sportsnet is joining us. Shai, great to talk to you, man. This is, um, look, the last three and a half months have been surreal. But if you're the Jays, this is getting, this is getting extra surreal. Yeah, I mean, I've heard a, a lot of bad words used in relation to, to describe the situation. Uh, but it, it is completely surreal. I mean, you, you think about what 29 other teams are doing right now. They're essentially getting ready for spring training. And the Blue Jays are trying to get ready for spring training, but not sure where they're going to be working out, where they're going to be playing the regular season, where they're going to be settling. Nobody knows where to sort of put down any sort of roots right now. And so that's a a pretty difficult state of being when you know that you've got to hit the ground running and every day is crucial because you're already working with a, a truncated training schedule to get ready for the season. So uh, certainly difficult times, frustrating times for a lot of people. And you know that's not even factoring in the additional pressures that you face because of the uh, health risks caused by COVID-19. Shai Davidi joining us here on Timmins. Do you think eventually they will get up to Canada? I mean, you know, there, there was a lot of optimism. Uh, you know, I've, I've talked to uh, a couple different experts. And, you know, one of them thinks that the, their plan is totally feasible and poses no risk to, to pub, or minimal risk to public health. Uh, another thinks that there's no way that it should happen. You know, I mean, sure, I think that, I think that there's a, a case to be made for it. But, you know, I listened to uh, Dr. Teresa Tam give her update yesterday, and it really struck me how often she pointed to the the fragility of our containment of the pandemic down uh, up here. Right. And, you know, she didn't directly say, look what's happening in the United States, but it was kind of pointing like, you know, if we don't keep it under wraps, right. We're, we're going to be the, we don't want to be the United States. You know, that's a, it's a cautionary tale that is becoming more and more tragic by the day. And, there, there's a lot of un- understandable uh, weariness about opening the borders to to this to this plan. So, do I think it'll ultimately get done? I honestly don't know. I don't want to put myself in the shoes of uh, government officials. I know there was a lot of optimism. Uh, I know some people thought it was pretty much all but done uh, at the end of last week over the weekend, and now everybody's a little bit more uncertain about it. Mm-hmm. Shy Davidi here on Tim and Sid. Uh, Shy, as, as Tim brought up earlier in the show, Ryan Zimmerman, he's a no go. Joe Ross, also of the Nationals, a no go. Mike Leake of the Diamondbacks, he will not be going forward with this season. Ian Desmond of the Rockies last night with a with a long post uh, detailing why he is not going. Have you caught wind at all of of any any member of the Jays who seriously thought about not reporting to Dunedin for? For obviously a lot of reasons, either their health health reasons, just psychological reasons about going to Florida in this moment where it's a worse spot for COVID-19 than Europe, all of Europe. How, did you catch wind of any of that? Uh, from a player, no, but I, I've heard some unease uh, from others about going in Florida. I don't know about to the point of not reporting, but certainly people not wanting to be in Florida. And I mean, you can really understand that and you can understand why, Um, you know, this is a tough spot. I really feel for, uh, for, you know, coaches, support staff, uh, employees, you know, up and down the organization because, and not just for the Blue Jays, for anybody, because I think it's tougher for a lot of those people to say no uh, if they're not feeling uncomfortable you know, their job status, you know, they're, they're a lot more replaceable than a player, right? You know, players, players have certain rights and there's only so many of them who are capable of playing in the big league level. Whereas with, with coaches and support staff, you know, the, it's not, it's, there's not the same supply and demand. So uh, I think that they're in a really difficult spot. I feel for, for some people who are, concerned about you know their their health status or their family situation whatever it may be and uh you know i I think that there's going to be a lot of people like that across the game who are going into this pretty concerned about it and you know crossing their fingers and really hoping for the best i I, um 
I might be going a little bit backwards here, but I, I have to ask about the quarantine situation in Toronto as it relates to teams if they were going to play their home games at home. Is it your understanding that opponents would be confined to the hotel at the Rogers Center and the field and the facilities? Is that part of the plan that the Jays had to present to uh, the federal and local health authorities? So I don't know the specific details, but conceptually, yes, that's essentially what it is, right? And so, you know, they're not, people are, the Quarantine Act says basically you got to go home, shelter for 14 days, mm-hmm. right? And be isolated. And the, the vision of this plan is essentially that the umbrellas expanded a little bit and you can go to the field and back, right? And the field is attached to the hotel. You're really not going outdoors. Your contact with the wider community is limited, if, uh, if not essentially zero. So that would be the theory of it. Uh, but, you know, the Quarantine Act is, is uh, quite robust in terms of what it, uh, the, 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 um, the powers it gives for, for punishment. You know, it could be fi- a fine of up to $750,000. There's jail time attached to it for violations. You know, this isn't, uh, this isn't something that you can be flouted. And I, I think that the government would be looking at it and saying, well, we have to be really careful in terms of who we're doling out special privileges to. So, you know, that, that's all part of this mix. Uh, but, you know, I think conceptually the plan would seem to make sense. It would be reliant on a team being essentially 100% on board with it and adhering to it to that degree. Uh, and you know, it could potentially work if you get 100% compliance. Uh, but, you know, as we're seeing in all sports, you know, that doesn't necessarily happen with athletes. And uh, I think that is playing part of a role in, in some of the reluctance. Shy of Video Sports in here on Tim and Sid. Shy, wh- how big of an issue, I mean, there are a lot of issues. How big of an issue, if you're the Canadian federal government, is the fact that the Jays also... Let's get to the regular season. Let's assume we get to that point. The Jays do not have jurisdiction over how the visiting team controls their quarantine. How, how, how much of a stickler is that? Yeah, I mean, well, essentially, the every well, the, uh, there's a couple layers, right? So there's the MOB protocol, which covers all 30 teams, right? It's 113 pages. Uh, I've, I've read through much of the document. It is substantial and thorough. Um, so there's that. Now the the Blue Jays essentially have created like an additional protocol for themselves and for other clubs over and above that, which I would presume that other teams would have to agree to follow when they arrive here for games against the Blue Jays. Then <clears throat> further to that, the protocol says that each team is responsible for creating its own code of conduct for how you are to behave once you're away from the field in terms of what you can do, who you can see, uh, you know, can you go home? Can you, how many family members you can visit, stuff like that. So uh, that's the final factor. So, uh, you know, when you say, you know, uh, the Blue Jays don't have sort of jurisdiction over other teams, I think that's where you can have a little bit of gray. But again, I don't, I haven't seen the details, so it's 100%, but my understanding of the concept is that, players would not be able to just go out at night after a game and, you know, head out to a patio and hang out and then come back to the hotel. You know, essentially you'd be doing your quarantine at the hotel in the dome. And the exception would be that rather than being confined just to your room, your, your confinement includes the dome as well. And a lot of these things obviously are changing day by day. We heard Jim Crane say that he wanted to have fans in the stands in Houston. And then Houston's top doctor just told uh, ESPN that he wouldn't be adverse to shutting things down and telling the Astros to go find somewhere else to play if cases continued to spike in the city. So everything changes uh, day by day. And staying on top of this uh, is a, a near a full-time job. And we've been attempting to do this. But I, I want to move try. on, Shai, uh, to uh, the Jays' actual roster because that's some of the fun stuff here. And we had 58 names on a list. And I'm, I'm, I, I heard in, in Mark Shapiro's voice when he spoke to us last week that 
we we might get some names that that would make us smile. But were there any surprises to you on that list? Well, I wouldn't say surprises, but you know, I just wasn't sure how many of their lower levels of the minor league prospects they would include. Uh, but you know, Jordan Groshans was there, Alec Manoa was there, Simeon Woods Richardson was there, uh, Alejandro Kirk was there. You know, these are some guys who, in all likelihood, weren't going to factor into the big league club this year. Uh, you know, barring some sort of substantial and uh, really unlikely set of circumstances. Uh, and you know, that, that's a sizable number when you're thinking that. You know, when you're putting together this roster, you have to think we are both having to prepare ourselves to have enough depth to survive a season in which an outbreak could knock out a handful of players at any given time, uh, as well as, you know, trying to ensure that some of your key young players are still getting some type of development uh, of this season, because this is re- with the minor league season being officially canceled today. This is, this is really it. This is what, what those kids are getting. So, you know, that's a lot to balance with this roster and to, to try and achieve. And, um, you know, I thought those number, you know, getting all those kids on was from from that standpoint, a pretty good, uh, a pretty good result for the Blue Jays. Uh, they've retained a little bit of room too, uh, to the, to uh, potentially add Austin Martin, their first round pick, uh, if he signs. And, you know, I, I wonder, I think now that uh, Spencer Torkelson, the number one overall pick is signed that uh, we may see things move with Austin Martin in the coming days. Uh, so, you know, I think by and large, there, there's a, a good balance there that the Blue Jays managed to achieve. And Shai, call me, call me crazy, but in a situation like this, where you're only playing 60 games, I mean, a young player could make an impact in this summer camp, could he not? Like, or should we rule anything out? I know, it's a, I know it's a long shot for a few of these kids, I understand that. But you need to take the arms or the bats that look the best, right? Like, you can't. You can't edge your way in April here and then see what you got. Like, I think if I'm a young player, I'm thinking I can make an impression here. I can make an impression impression fairly quickly. Sure, uh, you know, I mean, for for one of those, uh, for, for talking about like Jordan Groshan, Alex Manoa, Simeon Woods, Richardson of the world, you know, that leap. Uh, I mean, it's these a big guys. One. Yeah, it's uh, a big one. Uh, I mean, uh, you know, only one of them has been in high A. The other guys have. have barely played in low A and Jordan Groshan, you know, barely had a month in, in low A before he got injured. You know, to suddenly say, okay, we're going to slot you into the big leagues and start your service time clock and expect you to contribute in this weird structured season. I just can't see any team in the right mind doing that just because, you know, it's, it's potentially damaging developmentally. It's certainly damaging from a roster standpoint. And you're just not getting enough of a return. Um, you know, so the, the one scenario I could maybe see, like, say the Blue Jays are in contention, there's like a week or two to go. And, uh, you know, you need like a, a big arm to give you some relief outs. And, uh, you know, Alec Manoa is throwing the hell out of the ball at the alternative training site in Buffalo. You know, I could see maybe you could talk yourself into that. Uh, but beyond that, you know, this is, this is going to be about hitting the ground running and you're going to want your, I think, you know, the, the bulk of your reps going to some guys who, who have some experience and who are better prepared to hit the ground running. Um, this is a yes or no, cause we've run out of time and it's a juicy yes or no. Does Nate Pearson start on the Jays roster when they Ooh. play game one? Juicy. Yes. Yes. And uh, I'll, just really? one short statement I'll add to that. If, if, there, if he's not on the roster, it could not be a more blatant example of service time manipulation <laughs> because there is just no developmental case that you can make that says, yeah, he's better off at the alternative training site throw it, playing intra-squad games as opposed <laughs> to pitching games in big league. No, but like he's going to get a, Even a, if sore, it's seven a sore days. shoulder, shy, sore shoulder at the end of summer camp. Oh, sore shoulder. Gone 10 Maybe. days. That's all we're talking about, right? That's all we're talking I like about. The answer. I mean, you can't even pretend on this one. Like, you know, I, at the end of <laughs> at the end of the first spring training, I could have I could have honestly made a case for it and said, okay, right. I can see it. Like, this is just like I mean, like, nowhere to go. Kidding? Nowhere to yeah. go. Yeah, like, uh, you can't make. Case. Always good catching up with you. Stay well. Stay safe. Uh, we'll talk to you again soon. 
You fellows too. Take care. All right. There is a uh, shy of of sports. Now we got to hit the break. When we come back, is the NBA going to Orlando? What will they do once they get to Orlando? Mark Spears, ESPN and the undefeated. Our old friend will join us next right here on Tim and Sid on the Sportsnet radio network and across the Sportsnet family of channels. My toes.